inshallah going to start memorizing the Quran. Is it the 15 line Mus'haf that's called Hifz Mus'haf? I'm not sure. You know, generally the Mus'haf, um, what's popular around the world is the standard. I don't know the. It's this print, which is usually like the the Saudi print, and it's all. Oh, let me just. Fifteen, I think I counted. So, this is the standard mushaf, which I do advise if you're memorizing the Quran to use that. But it's up to you. Generally, all mushafs throughout the world generally use that template. So that means that the page that begins with this verse will begin with that verse everywhere in, in the world using that standard model of the Quran. There is a different model in print which is the indo-pak model and so like in pakistan they have a different um template of the layout of the quran so when i open let's say page uh, let's say i open any page on that and i look at the the left hand page top verse it if i go to that same in in that mushaf it will be a different verse it's not so it's organized. I think they have 14 or they have a different number of lines. So it affects the layout. And if you're memorizing the Quran, it's uh, it's very important to have that uh, continuity that wherever you pick up a mushaf. Mushaf just means the Quran. The written Quran in Arabic is called a mushaf. And wherever you pick up a mushaf, there is continuity. So it, it uh, corroborates your learning. That's important. So that's all I'd say. Otherwise, it's entirely up to you. When I was when I did my hif, uh, in I did it in Pakistan, but I insisted I took my own mushaf, and it wasn't this one. I took a, a different one, and I would just memorize with that always. I would make a point that I I would not read from the other prints because I didn't want to confuse myself when I was memorizing. Because sometimes. Even till today, I'll remember a verse and I just remember where it was. Like I'll remember that, oh, that was on the left hand page at the top. See, because we memorize things spatially and in connection to their surroundings. So it's important not to disturb that. Uh, yep, so shukran and may Allah bless your journey. You know, memorizing is incredibly powerful. And what it does, um, beloved, is below it. What it does is that it increases your capacity to memorize. Like the more you memorize, the better you get at memorizing. It's not, um, don't think you, it's not like something you exhaust. It's like you, you, you kind of sharpen and hone those skills. They just become improved. You just get much better. And the Quran is something amazing to um, to to memorize. It is it's incredibly powerful. I would say if you can, I don't know if you can, um, if you can um, if if you can learn some Arabic prior to doing so. That would be definitely very. Um, that would be that. That would be great. It really has helped me till today. That I mean, the the fact that I did some Arabic. I mean, I learned my basic Arabic, which, to be honest, you could learn in six months to a year easily. Easily, you could just use Doctor Surti's book. I always recommend it. You know, it may come across to some people a bit on the dry side. I, I don't think so. I think it was fantastic. Obviously, like anything, there's room for improvements. But, it, you know, you could get through it. I got through it on my own. And you could do that in four to six months. And then another six months just practice. And then you memorize the Quran. And what it will do is it will consolidate your Arabic. And your Arabic making meaning of the Quran will make that memorizing so much more precious. Because you're actually understanding what you're memorizing it's so powerful honestly uh, it's one of the it is one of the best things i ever did in my life absolutely and and i'm you know i'm not saying people have to do that but if you choose to do it 
do it. You know, you know, the, the, as as uh, it's been said that wherever you go, go with all your heart. Allah. Um, right. Nora, assalamu alaikum. Did you change the video setup? Ah, is it different? There were one, two things I slightly changed. I don't know. Is it is it worse? If there's issues, let me know. And I can try and... Uh, I don't know if I can fix them right now, but maybe for next week. <laughs> you know me, I'm always fidgeting with things. Yeah, so doing it. All right. Clear. Shukran, shukran. Boys and girls just tuned in. What is Mufti talking about today? Different topics. I'll be talking about shortly about the topic of uh, loneliness. We're just taking a look at some of your comments and questions before I get on to that. Uh, it's good on Facebook. Um, no, it's fine. Oh, shukran, shukran. Dr. Su it's not Dr. Salty. <laughs> Dr. Surti. So S-U-R-T-Y. Um, I absolutely, I, I can't recommend his book enough. Seriously. He's an amazing individual, by the way, you know, may Allah bless him. Very humble, very, he used to lecture at Birmingham university many years ago. I'm pretty sure he's retired by now and very humble, man, you know, and yeah. How long did it take you to learn Arabic? Your fusha is better than Allah, Allah. <laughs> ah, see, embarrassing me. <laughs> so this, my Arabic, I studied Dr. Surti's book and I finished it in about four months. I studied it on my own and I must have been about 17 years old. And yeah, and I just, just do about half an hour every single day. I'll caveat that by saying, okay, I didn't have much of a life. <laughs> and I didn't, and that became the highlight of my day. So I used to, I did used to work. See, some of us went through the tough life. We didn't get it easy like <laughs> the young uns today. So um, I would wake up and after subah, I would sit down and I would do my Arabic, which was like about half an hour every day, and then I'd get ready and go to work. I used to work at the time in an, used to work in a, in a brokerage, insurance brokerage. But the, and so I used to really look forward to the Arabic every day. And I used to, even at work, sometimes I'd be going over it in my mind and be writing it on these post-it notes. <laughs> and just, yeah, and I, I must have finished that book in four months. I then contacted Dr. Surti. I remember telling him um, that if I could get some kind of test and certificate, and he was very kind. And he, this is years ago. This is going like, I don't know, 1997 or something. And I then, after that, started doing a few things in Arabic. I attended some, but you know, I must say within that first six months to uh, whatever it was, I laid the foundations for Arabic. I did then go on to Damas to study in Damascus. And that was obviously great. But I realized when I was in Damascus, my foundations for the Arabic language were already laid. I just needed practice and I needed to improve and I needed more vocab. But I understood things in terms of grammar. I understood why people are saying certain things. I, I may be like, oh, okay, you use that word and not this word. I get it now. But I wasn't I wasn't having to learn. I was just having to increase the vocab. And the immersive experience was really necessary. And I really appreciated that. And I, um, see, I can be very talkative. <laughs> and that helps in learning a language. And so I... I remember I ended up living with um, some guys that were, um, one of them was from Tunis and one was from Algeria. And great people, I wonder what came of them in time. But 
they, 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 for some reason, their first half was really good. And one of them who hadn't really got much secular education or religious education, but his first half was just incredible. I think he just watched so many cartoons growing up. And he was a bit of a vampire, he used to stay awake at night. And I had this vampiric habit for since God knows I'm very nocturnal. I'm awake at nights and proper alert, <laughs> like an owl. <laughs> yeah, so, and uh, me and him would just talk. And we would just talk and talk and talk and sometimes we'd debate and sometimes we'd, because he was a bit selfie inclined. And, but he wasn't this kind of hateful person. He was very, you know, he's still, there was a lot of compassion and love still from him. And and we, we would just talk about stuff. And sometimes we'd all uh, debate. Sometimes we'd just, you know, sometimes we'd read. I remember I used to go through that storybook, Kalila Wadimna. And it's such an epic book for anybody wanting to study Arabic. And we would go through that. I would ask him, could you could you read this with me? And because the Arabic in it is so eloquent. And yeah, and I still have these memories like they were, you know, like maybe they were just like a year ago or something. That's how vivid they are in my mind. And we would sit up at night, just me and him, and we'd just be we'd be laughing sometimes and the jokes and and that really propelled, you know, uh, my Arabic. But so, yeah, that's definitely it. Get talking, people. Get talking. I need to do the same thing with my Spanish. <laughs> I need to just be talking because I'm at that stage where I, it's like I understand things and if I read them and if I, I can then say them, but I have to kind of, to say, to say things, I have to think because I don't speak it. So I don't practice it. So my... Uh, kind of uh, conversations in it are the, 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 and sometimes I'll think, oh, which word do we use for that? And then when I hear it, I'll be like, oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, Nora, shukran, shukran, much appreciated uh, for the super chat. This one, foundation course. Yep, that's the one by Dr. Surti. I think there may be some PDFs online other people do courses as well i've heard great things by what um um with the um, ustaz norman ali khan's courses arabic courses you know um i've heard people say wonderful things that they, it's really incredibly boosted their learning so yeah do look try out different things the main thing is just try uh 